for her. They want, they want to protect her. You are mine. I am yours. Now you are mine. Now this is you are mine and I have to protect her. Their hearts are so much melted that every aspect of Swamni, her lotus feet, her thin waist, her hands, you read, many times you read that her soft hands and the gopis are always worried. The kingaris are always worried. Not that she will hurt herself or that the, the waist will break or something like that. But this is the expression of Madana Makya Mahabhav. This is what actually Radhika is sending in the hearts of the kingaris. This is this Tadatmiya. They feel so much mm -hmm. overwhelming love for Swamini that this love, this Madanakya Mahabhav, is very also fragile, so that they are, they are caring for her every second. So this is not to be literally meaning that the waist will break or the hip will break, but it's an expression of the highest love possible. Could I ask everyone to slow down a bit for the, for yeah. the translation? I'm sorry. We get, no, we get we get very eager, and that's very that's a very good thing. But thank thank you for that answer. Very that's very clarifying. Karanga, please. I just want to to say to continue <laughs> on uh, Tarun Baba's um, nice explanations. When I read and when I hear this uh, addressing. Radhika, Krishodari. First thing which is coming to me is this is the Kishori age. Mm. So Kishori age means that Radhika is in mature teenage year. She is not baby, she is not little girl, but she is teenage girl. And what does it mean, teenage girl? So it means that all her body became so mature. And it means that her voice is mature, sweet, but mature. Her glances are not so, are also restless, but not like a little girl but teenage girl who is always looking for her lover this is different mood and this is mood of madhuryaras then mm. radhika's shoulders are so nice and little bit lower down and then her breasts are hard they are not soft. They are hard because they are full of love, which she wants to give to Krishna. Then we have her mature bodily feature of hips, which are broad and giving Krishna so many pleasure. And in between them is a waist, which Tarun Baba says it's, it's not possible to imagine this kind of waist. But Acharyas is writing that it's very thin braced because they want to help us to meditate on all rupa, form of Radhika. <laughs> In Kishori age. Mm -hmm. And this teeny waist is emphasizes actually all other features, parts of Radhika. So this is her lavanya in most beautiful, attractive form. And this is the reason why devotees sometimes are calling Radhika. Tribangi Vilasini. We know Krishna is Tribanga, but devotees call Radhika Tribangi Vilasini because her Vilas movements with such a beautiful teenage body is so attractive. 
so charming, so sweet, that Krishna, when he see her, even from the distance, he can faint. So, this teeny waist is actually, we can see for sadhakas for meditation, on all form of Radhika, for Krishna for enjoying all parts of <laughs> Radhika's <clears throat> mature teenage body, and for Manjaris also to serve this teeny waist, always afraid. What will happen with this? This is rasa. This is relationship. It's not tattva. We cannot explain it through the tattva. Because mm. Manjaris are not looking at Radhika through the tattva. They say, oh, she's so young. She is so teenage. Her waist, her oh. breasts are yeah. so heavy. And pushing her to go in Kunja to meet her lover. So Manjaris are trying to protect this waist with this string, golden string, with two tassels. And this is behind this uh, different secrets between what does it mean and what is it and so on and so on. But I just wanted to continue a little bit. The only, the only, thing, the only thing which comes close to this feeling of the manjaris are uh, in the material world, we can see the mother and the child. Everyone, I'm not a parent, I'm a teacher, I don't have this feeling, but I know that mothers have this feeling when the children are young, they think all the time, what are they doing? When will they come back? Will something happen to them? So this is the highest love possible in the material world. So what to imagine the kinkaris must feel for Radhika and him in Madanakya Mahabhav, in the highest realm of love, we cannot even imagine. And also, you see this, this symbol of the thin waist, just to make a joke. You can see here in the material world, when you hear that the, the models for, for, for actors and, 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 and fashion models, you know, when they, when they make their photo shooting, they Photoshop. They photoshop their waists, <laughs> so they all want to be like this, you know. So this is really also a symbol of beauty, like you said, Goranga. The whole form is enhanced by this, you know, this 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 form, you know. So this is all there: the buttocks, the the waist, the breast. Everything is there to augment and to enhance the rasa of Krishna. So even in this world, they do it. So how how wonderful and beautiful must Swamini look like? We cannot imagine. We can, but we can meditate in close association of other manjaris and be a little bit behind of them and look how they are doing with Radhika in such a mood, passionate mood. And we can learn their feelings and try to receive their feelings and consciousness and uh, thoughts and the uh, mood of serving, we, we should learn from them. Because we can see here from uh, Udavaji very nicely <laughs> is guiding this conversation. <laughs> because we can see that uh, the main feeling of Raghunath is love for Man Radhika. But secondary feeling is Baya, fear. Yeah, protection, for protection. Protection, fear also, what will happen? I want, I'm worried for my seva, that my Swamini be satisfied, be attractive to her lover. I worry to satisfy her. Did I do everything? Even Radhika is afraid when she is ornamenting, arranging kunja, what's, what's going on, what is missing? Isn't it, isn't it, isn't it amazing and astonishing how, how completely different the material world is? Yes. Here, in the the, like you see, in the material world, it is it's like 180 degrees complete opposite. We only think about ourselves. This is such a huge, huge difference. Thank you, Goranga. And this is the difference, why Rupa 
Goswami is very, and Prabhupada, I know from Prabhupada, I, I never read the Rupa Goswami directly, I don't know how to do it. But I learned from Prabhupada actually why Rupa Goswami is speaking and um, about these secondary rasas. Because these secondary rasas are not primary, like Sakha, Madhurya, Vatsalya, Das, and so on and so on. But these secondary rasas are nourishing the primary rasa. But it must be present, pretty, pure prema. Otherwise, these secondary rasas are making a mess. But when someone loves someone, Completely, like you said, selflessly, we cannot imagine in this material world it. Therefore, Gurudev is saying, stay above. Stay above. That's stay the point. above is the most important thing. Yes, and through stay above, when fear for Ishta Dev appears, then it's nourishing the above more yes. and more and more and more. Yes. Sorry. Very nice. Thank you. So, I need to add, but I want to contribute to country. But a very basic thing. So, if we see Guru Dev, which we should understand, Guru Dev aware many. many so sound, is not, sound is not coming. Okay. Can you hear? Better, better. Better. So, so if, if we see Guru Dev, yeah. If we see and check Guru Dev's behavior. Janandaji, uh, huh? sorry. I see Atul. Yeah, thank you. His mic was open. Yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Brother. So, if, if I see Gurudev's behavior, Gurudev aware every devotee, every each devotee feeling. So, and then how can we understand? If we love somebody, and love is increasing, this awareness is more go deep. Like say, realization, Brahman realization, they don't aware anything. <laughs> Maybe they, they are watching, you know, only light. Like a Paramatma realization, maybe they, they are a little bit seeing the future Paramatma. But if Lhasa, Goranga Sundra Prabhu say, so Lhasa is deeper and deeper, then more awareness is happening. <laughs> And highest awareness, so Tarun Baba say, like Madana Kya Mahaba, Madana Mahababa. So that Baba also, Manjari also has, because they are oneness with Radha. So they are so oneness, they, they could feel, they are aware, Radha's every feeling. So this, I, I, Recognize so Gurudev's why so so you know so uh, how to say aware or so you know pay attention to each devotee because his love is so big. Like I myself, my awareness is very small because love is small. So in this Manjari case, Manjari has so much feeling, so much love for Swami for. Swami is Moha. Therefore, their, their awareness is so, so strong, so deep. So therefore, and also say, this Kaishora age, Shori age is very tender, very softness. So therefore, even little bit thing, maybe we may have, like I said, if we touch the flower, Sometimes flower petal, like I say, like we touch like a, like a rose. Sometimes if we are not too careful and then rose flower is falling down. So similarly, Manjari is thinking, oh my God, this Swami is so beautiful, oh, so tender. <laughs> so I have to be very conscious, very aware. Otherwise, you know, I, I had Swami 
Oh, I've broken. I may break some. <laughs> Actually, not break, but the uh, feeling so intense. Oh, might be like this. <laughs> so this, uh, you know, this is I see Guru Dev and beautiful. How Manjari aware? This is so strong. I am yeah. happy every day. <laughs> yes, yes. There is one. There is one thing is also popping up in my head. I, a long time ago. Before Gurudev uh, told me not to read anything, I was reading the uh, Chiba Goswami's commentary on the Sandarbhas like five, six years ago. And actually, this is such a wonderful point you're making, Marat, the awareness. Krishna's form is Satchit Ananda. So he is eternal, he is full of knowledge, and he is aware of everything and everyone it, because he is the super soul in everyone's heart. And his Ananda means all overwhelming spiritual bliss. So Jiva Goswami is saying the Jiva is also Satchit Ananda, but in a different way. The Jiva is eternal and the Jiva has Ananda. The Ananda of the Jiva is to be free from misery. Only by Bhakti we can get real Ananda. But the important thing I want to say is this Chit. It is said in the Sandarbhas that this awareness of the Jiva is only restricted to his own body. So he can only feel, the jiva can only feel what is going on inside his body. So, and if we now, this is again coming to the point of empathy, by the process of bhakti, when ladini shakti and samvit shakti combined enter into our heart as bhakti, this chit, this awareness of our kshetra, this own, our body is like kshetra, is a field. So this is going out. So, like you said wonderfully, Maharaj, Gurudev is a self-realized person. So his chit, his awareness is long gone uh, uh, over his own field of body and mind. So he is so connected with Ladini Shakti and Sambhichar, Ladini and uh, Swamini, of course. No? He is so connected to Swamini that his awareness is so, yeah, slower, slower. <laughs> his his awareness is so much more than a normal jiva and this is due to the power of bhakti this awareness this possibility to feel into the hearts of all the jivas is only possible by bhakti by the mercy of of swamini so i find this very interesting we start that i only know what is happening with me but we have to change this. Bhakti is changing this awareness, this chit, and this ananda is changing into spiritual energy. And then we can feel the hearts of the other persons. So this was just was coming in, in my head. Wow, wonderful. And also, no, you know, like generally speaking, we, we are marginal potency. So we can select each one. Yes. You know, material energy and spiritual energy. But if we practice, we try to surrender, we try to connect to Swamini, then you mentioned uh, Fradini Shakti and uh, uh, San, uh, Sambit, Sambit. Shakti, because Sambit is, and, and that energy, we, we are influenced this energy. Yes. Then we are no more, even, you know, marginal potency mm. we like 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 a belong mm. uh, in in a, in a, in the friday shakti like belong and then i was you know and then i was last time i was thinking actually we are thinking we are part and personal of the supreme lord but it's 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 correct but not correct if we really connect, we are part and parcel of Vladini Shakti. Yes. We, 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 are like a, we are like a child of Vladini Shakti. And then awareness is so big that mm. you mentioned. Mm. So this is very wonderful explanation. Thank you, everybody. Then we'll continue. We'll go from Radhika's body to these very famous lines about Krishna's body. 
you, I'm sure you remember. Krishna became Gauda to taste the love that Radhika feels for him. And after he had experienced that, he also wanted to taste the nectar of the Kinkari's service. While he relished the mood of the Manjaris, the Lord's body became formed like a turtle. Or sometimes his limbs would loosen and stretch out Asandi Ryoga. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's described Ma Mahaprabhu's mad words after he came out of his Kumakriti, this, this uh, turtle form in the Antialila chapter 4. Today I went to Govardhan Hill, said, said Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to see if Krishna was tending his cows there. Climbing on Govardhan Hill, Krishna played his flute, surrounded by the cows. Hearing the flute song, Shrimati Radha came there. O Saki, I cannot describe her form and mood. Krishna took Radha by the hand and entered a cave with her, while the Sakis told me to pick some flowers. Then Anandadas Babaji continues, for the service of Shri Shri Radha Madhava, the Sakis are asking the Kinkaris to pick flowers. Here it is clear that Mahaprabhu finally came to relish the mood of the spiritual maidservants, Manjaris, in the pinnacle of his ecstatic absorption. And when Mahaprabhu almost drowned of ecstasy in the ocean, and all the joints of his bones became disconnected out of ecstasy, he told his devotees in half external consciousness, this is still uh, Chaitanya Charitamita in Adya Lila. Seeing the Yamuna River, I went to Vrindavan, where I saw the prince of Raja, Krishna, playing in the water with Sri Radhika and the gopis, having great fun. I stayed on the shore with the other Sakis, while one Saki showed this pastime to the others. And now Anandadas Babaji, here again Mahaprabhu explains that he did not play an active role in Krishna's pastimes, but that he, or rather she, was relishing a service position, like that of the Manjaris. With witnessing these sweet pastimes, without taking active part in them. Chaitanya Taditamrita further says, whatever he himself came to relish, he taught his devotees. Since, as is shown above, he did relish Manjari Bhav. He was the one who taught it to the devotees also. Notably, through Shri Rupa and Shri Ra Raghunatha Das Goswami. So whenever, 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 whenever sorry, sorry, please, whenever please, someone please. is asking, so this, we should really make a screenshot of these <laughs> lines because sometimes the people say, where is Manjari Bhav? What are you talking about? What is Manjari Bhav? Here you have it. I, this is so wonderful that we speak about this verse today because this paragraph alone is evidence that what was given, what was never given before, Uchvala Rasa Svabhakti Shriyam, 
was given and, and this is fascinating, tasted by, he is in the mood of Radhika permanently, but here he is, he is experiencing Kinkari Bhav. So this paragraph is so, so important for us, uh, Manjari Bhav Sadakas, that even Mahaprabhu, who himself is in the mood of Swamini, he is tasting and experiencing the love of the Manjari. So now anyone who wants to say something about Manjari Bhav, please, please say something. You know, this is such a wonderful paragraph. We have to really make a screenshot of this and print it. And, and this is so important that the highest love was never given before. And Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu only came to give what he himself tasted. Not many people are aware actually of this fact that he himself tasted Manjari Bhav. I mean, this is for our minds, this is too much, you know, for us to understand he is in the mood of Radhika, but he is so attracted, still in the form, he is still Goranga. He is not only Radhika, he is not Radhika when he acts in Goralila. He is also Mahaprabhu. So here Mahaprabhu is showing us how extremely tasteful Kingari Manjari Bhav is. This is a wonderful, wonderful paragraph. Jai Ho. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, I need to, I want to need to say. So when we are practicing Bhaiti Bhakti, we, are, we, are, we could not recognize these bhaktas even though we are leading many times. And when we practice Raga Bhakti under the Rashka Vajnava, <laughs> to the help of Rashka Vajnava, then our vision becomes a little, per se, broad or maybe go deeper. Then we, we could understand which Baba is Saki Baba, which Baba is Gopi Baba, Saki Baba, or Manjari Baba. We could discriminate by the mercy of Guru Manjari, Guru Dev, and other Rashka Vajnava. And then now Guru Dev is stressing us so much in what subject matter. What is Sanchari Baba? What is Sai Baba? Can you discriminate? <laughs> so only Sai Baba person could understand who is Sanchari, who is Sai Baba. Now they were teaching us to, 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 to stay, stay Baba, always 24-7, and to help to be, to, to, to stay in stay Baba. I feel this is, you know, Guru David want us to do. <laughs> so Guru David's feeling, now, like a good day, we got to, you know, sick and cough and uh, very weakness. He told us, oh, I, I never experienced this kind of weakness. <laughs> and he told us, oh, I might go, you know, like, you know, something kind of, some word which we, we don't want to hear. But still, good day was always helping us. How to help to stay, stay Baba. You are not this body. You have a spiritual body. <laughs> you are Dasi of Radhika. So Tarumbama said, this is Manjari. Manjari does not attend kind of Rasalira. Manjari does not enter in, in Jamuna. Or even Radha Kunda. Because if they enter, they cannot serve Swami. So they are all, always ready to do any seva. So this is very good comment. Thank you, Sarum Baba. Maybe I can say also yeah. something so that 
Baba is teaching us here and explaining, like you said, only through Rasika devotees we can understand these subtle points. And Baba is teaching us, and our Gurudev also, but Baba is writing here that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't took active, active role in this loving pastimes, which Krishna is, is changing with Radhika Gopis, but rather he was witnessing these pastimes, always ready to serve when time is proper, when he receives the order. So what does it mean? This is Manjari Bhav. I'm not taking active role. I'm observer. I'm witnessing this. Like many times we gave the example of um, different Lila's uh, splashing sports in Radhakund. And always there is a question, uh, where are the Manjaris? Manjaris are on the bank. They are not taking active role in this competition, in these water sports. They are taking the role of witnesses. They looking, they are laughing also because it's so fun. It's so very nice, and they like to see that Radhika is always victorious, Jayashri. But they never, because they are fixed in their Stai Baba, they never have desire, oh, I want to jump inside. And you see, this is real humility. This is real this humility. Is humility. Yes. humility doesn't mean I'm, I'm, I'm a worthless piece of dirt. This is not pure, pure humility. Pure humility is not to take active part and only to be helping and observing and serving. This is humility, not thinking I am just useless. No. Stand, like you said, standing on the banks of Radha Kunda, that is humility. And waiting. And waiting. When, and ready, when ready. Time, yes. When time will come, yes. when I offer my service. So you can see even in the beginning of the commentary of Baba, he is saying, when will you give me your personal service? He mm. is waiting. He is not ordering Radhika. You have to do it. Mm. No, this is wrong mood. You are compassion and you have to give me. No, I will wait until you give me. Otherwise, we are coming in the trap of Dharma. I am worshipping you, and I am forcing you, you have to give me. Otherwise, I will change. <laughs> oh. yes. What's happened with Munger? They are here, they are here, down. Oh, they are here. We're, we, were, we had to go out and uh, meditate a little bit. We're back now. <laughs> ah, <okay. laughs> so that's the point we should understand very, very properly. When devotee is Praying to Radhika, when, 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 he is not ordering, he is not giving instruction to Radhika. He is ready to wait and wait and wait because he wants to be servant. <laughs> and this is the mood of all pure devotees in all rasas, actually. You could see that Prahlad Maharaj never ordered Nishimhada, Nishimhadev. You are so strong, you are so powerful, you have to save me. No. He was waiting, he was praying to him. And what to say about Radhika's Kinkaris? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this Lila, he was waiting order of gopis. Just pick the flowers. Some menial service, actually. Pick the flowers. <laughs> and bring for the seva of pastime between loving Yugala Kishore. Wait, 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 but with full passion in your heart. And that's the point. How to wait with passion? <laughs> How to wait with passion? Because Tarun made such a beautiful, because this is a humility. I have passion in my heart. I'm burning in my heart, but I'm ready to wait and wait. And when, when? Million of years, 
if it's not, this is determination and humility, real, natural humility. So we should, I'm trying, I'm talking it not because I'm practicing it, <laughs> I'm trying to first, my, to, to put a, a, that I become aware of this. I have to change the consciousness. When I hear that Radhika is compassion, she is compassion, she will, will give, but it's not according to my order. I'm not forcing her. I'm ready. And yesterday we read this verse from um, Radha Rasha Sudanidi. If you don't give me, I'm ready, I will continue to aspire. To aspire because this is my sadhana. Aspiration for your service is my sadhana. And if you read today, Udavaji wrote some his commentaries on Gurudev's commentaries. See, what does it mean, raga and anuraga? This is most important thing. Someone who has a raga never force other side. You have to love me. No, <laughs> you cannot force anyone. And this is the sign of love and humility, like Tarunji said. Mm -hmm. I have to change the con it's a wrong, it's consciousness which is coming from Dharma, from Dharma Shastras. In Dharma, it said when you ask Madhukari, householder has to give you. But not in Rasa, not in Vrajmud. I'm asking Madhukari. And when you give me, I'm not forcing you. What I'm doing, I'm serving you with this Madhukari, not for myself. Otherwise, we will come in the trap of Dharma. This is the very, very important thing. Very important. Otherwise, we will not be able to receive Anurag. Radhe, sorry, if I made mistakes. Beautiful. Very right. beautiful. Really very beautiful. Um, I wonder, let's just see what the comment was there. Uh, uh, Guru Dev would chastise me for not staying with the feeling, but I wonder since we have such expertise here, and uh, since like uh, Tarun Baba said, it explodes the head, <laughs> this sentence, this paragraph, I wonder if I could ask Tarun Bhava to kindly put on his uh, first grade teacher, Bhav, and explain, walk us through these two sentences. Because I have lots of trouble understanding the, the positions, who's talking, who is who. And Read I, them again, I, please. I, Read them again. I will, and I expect the younger devotees might appreciate it too. So it's just these two sentences from Chaitanya Charitamrita. It yes. says, Today I went to Govardhan Hill. Yes. Who's I? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Okay, thank you. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, To see if Krishna was tending his cows there. Isn't Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Krishna? <laughs> you see, first of all, yo, this is this is really deep, you know. This is Mahaprabhu is Mahaprabhu. First of all, in Koralila, he plays the part of Mahaprabhu. Okay. So then yeah. we know that Mahaprabhu is the combination. Inside is Radhika, outside, you know, you know this. The mood is Radhika. Now his permanent mood is the mood of Swamini. Right. But he is not yeah. running around in and you know the Goralila is going from morning till evening. So he is there. He's married there. He has a mother there. Yeah. He, he, you know, he has pastimes there. But his inner mood is always the mood of Swamini. But here, he is, he is entering this mood. He has this ecstasy now. That There is okay. also one verse. It doesn't matter which, he, which mountain he's seeing. And it doesn't matter which river he is seeing. He always thinks this is Govardhan and this is the Jamuna. So here... We have clear evidence. Baba is saying, clearly, Baba is saying, here Mahaprabhu is experiencing yeah. Manjari Bhav. So how Later is this on, yeah. working? Slowly, how is slowly now. Slowly. Yeah. 
how this is working, <laughs> we cannot understand because this is very, very, very mysterious because Mahaprabhu is himself Krishna and Radha combined. So for him, there is no limitations. There is actually no limit to experience anything. So he is here experiencing Manjari Bhav. So the next sentence, which is the next sentence? The next sentence is, um, Climbing on Govardhan Hill, Krishna played his flute, surrounded by cows. Hearing the flute song, Shrimati Radha came. And then it gets interesting again. Uh, Osaki, I cannot describe her form and mood. Now, Krishna took Radha by the hand. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saying... Yes, yes. You, can, you can see he is, completely, he is completely overwhelmed by Manjari Bhav, so much so that <laughs> he even speaks to the ones who stand next to him. He addresses them as Saki. So when, when we read Krishna Leela, the, the Manjaris and the Gopis, they always address each other as, Ai Saki, what have you done? Ai Saki, what do you see? Ai Saki. So here we have 100% clear evidence that Mahaprabhu is an ecstasy. This we cannot, we cannot understand with mundane li lineature, you know. We have to understand here only one thing. Here Mahaprabhu is experiencing the limitless love of the Manjaris. He is completely overwhelmed by that feeling. We cannot even understand why. Nobody of us can understand why is it like that. Be he, it is like that because... He is himself in the mood of Swamini. And sometimes Krishna wants to know what Radhika feels. So he appeared as Mahaprabhu. So Radhika also wants to know how the Mancharis feel. So because there is such a wonderful exchange between Swamini and the Mancharis, here Mahaprabhu really wants to experience what actually the Kinkari are feeling. And he is saying mm. here, I, Saki, he, 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 he sees himself, Radhika, is coming there, but he himself, this we cannot understand, you know, he's not schizophrenic. He is now seeing a pastime in the mood of a manjari. And for him, this is always possible because in the spiritual world, Yoga Maya arranges for that. It is not possible for us to understand. But what we can understand is that this manjari bhav is such a wonderful thing it can even overwhelm Goranga Mahaprabhu in the mood of Swamini. So mm. she wants to she wants to understand what the Kingari is feeling. This is wonderful. That is the most beautiful this thing. This is miraculous, yes. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, thank you. I hope that little explanation helped uh, everybody a little bit. It helps me. Then we there's no more comments, then we'll continue a little bit. Radhe, Radhe. Back to Radhika's. <laughs> yes. Oh, please. I'm sorry. I have two short questions. One question is, um, wh what is the reason of this extraordinary manifestation of body of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? And the second question, does he have this extraordinary manifestation only when he is in Manjari Bhav or also when he is in Radhika Bhav? Thank you so much. This is a good question. Um, this now, I think you are referring to this elongation of his bodily parts, right? So this right now, this is only because he experienced this uh, Madanakya Mahabhav. It doesn't matter if, 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 it's, if Radhika is experiencing Madanakya Mahabhav, he has these symptoms. When he is in the mood of Swamini, he has these symptoms. But also it is the same love. Madanakya Mahabhav in the hearts of the Manjaris is not super different from that in, in the heart of Radhika. So this, this transformation of his body is caused by this mood, by this extremely high Madanakya Mahabhav. The, 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 the joints get longer, the joints restrict. So this is only because he is in the mood of Swamini in combination here with, with Manjari Bhav. He is not experiencing any other Bhav. That this, I mean, Chayananda knows more about this, but this is only Madanakya Mahabhav's expression, which, which transforms his body. That is my understanding. You want to comment, uh, Chayananda? Yeah, very beautiful comment. But this, she here say this expression of Manjari, Baba say, while he relishes the mood of the Manjari, 
the Lord's body become form like turtle, or sometimes his limb would loosen and stretch out. So my feeling is, of course, you know, Madanaki Mahababa is is radical, or you know, some some also Manjari also could relish. But especially this Mahaprabhu want to show us how this Maha, you know, this Madanaki Mahababa, and also Baba is more because Mahaprabhu want to show us what no other incarnation, no other age shows this Baba. Mm -hmm. So, in in that sense, Baba here stressing actually Mahaprabhu especially want to us to give Manjari Baba because we cannot become Radha, impossible. But only we can taste Radha's feeling is only we can, we could be Manjari or Kinkari. And in that oneness of Radha's feeling, at that time we can feel it. So Baba is saying here, my, my feeling is this, so Mahaprabhu won't show us this, you know, no other incarnation gave. This is yes. Dunnatopalasa. It's yes. Babosa. It's completely amazing. If mm. if your 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 living, you know, your you living entity, if you could understand and taste, you amazed, you are mad like Mahab. Mm. Mm. That's my feeling. Yes, hundred percent. I hundred percent agree. Wonderful. Wonderful. You see, this this mysterious actings of Mahaprabhu is there to fascinate us to enter also to enter Goralila and from Goralila to Radha Krishna Lila. You see, it's so miraculous and mysterious. Just take the the conversation between Rai Ramananda, Rai Ramananda and Mahaprabhu. At one point, Mahaprabhu is showing, I think, Rai Ramananda Roy his form as Radha and Krishna. So how do you explain this? He is sitting there with Rai Ramananda, but he is showing him his combined form as Radha and Krishna. So there is no limit. Oh, there's no limit. He is, he is Radhika. He, he, all Shaktis are in, in Swamini. So whatever Mahaprabhu wants to do, there is no limit and no nothing else can stop him. And this is what, what, what Chayananda Maharaj said. First of all, this is primarily there to make us firm believers in Manjari Bhav Sadhana. And second, it shows, he shows himself that tasting, even in the mood of Swamini, tasting Kinkari Bhav, Manjari Bhav, is something he wants to relish. That should be enough impetus for me to do the same. Wow. Wonderful. Rade? Wow. Say, if I just say something, and uh, when what Tarunji said that uh, before Ramananda Roy, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu manifested the Krishna form, combined form, Krishna and Radhika. Why he did it? Because Ramananda Roy is Saki. So he's Samasneha, in Samasneha mood. He likes Krishna and Radha on the same. He's yes. very close friends to Radhika, but he is still loves so much and he has attachment for Krishna also. So the most beautiful form for Ramananda Roy was the form which Mahaprabhu manifests like Krishna and Radhika, that they are together present in his one form. So it's like my brother said, uh, it, it's so touchy, we have to meditate, we have to de develop spiritual feelings because uh, sometimes it's not possible to always uh, very precisely answer some question. Devotee has to develop, uh, to try to ask uh, that qu uh, answer come in his heart and in his mind. And this is his realization. And then we can share with um, other because Mahaprabhu mm. is very complicated in one sense. So many different persons were looking <laughs> through their bhavas on on uh, Goranga, but 
if we are follow Rupa Goswami and Raghunath Goswami, then we will receive proper direction how to look at Goranga. And Baba is guiding us here yes. and our Guru, they are lineage, Rupa Nuga, they are guiding us from which perspective to look at Goranga. Otherwise, we will be very confused. You see, mm, there are yeah. so many forms to different devotees yeah. in so many moods, so many rasas, and so on and so on and so on. And when, when, we, when we remember, when, when I was last time here, two weeks ago or something like that, we were speaking Radha Rasa Sutta Nidhi. And I tried to say that actually, this is another mystery. Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur was a big, big sannyasi. And he was changed by Mahaprabhu and he was Tunga Vidya. He is actually, in one sense, he's a Saki. But actually, the mercy of Mahaprabhu is such a magical and mysterious thing that I, I, rem I mentioned this theater play from this Kavi Karnapur, Chaitanya Chandradaya. And Mahaprabhu is saying there, even if, in, even if you have a fixed form in Dwaraka, in the spiritual world, due to my mercy, I can give you a manjari form in Vrindavan. So this mercy of Mahaprabhu is not only limited to the Shivas, but he also said that you all get forms in, 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 as a manjari. And it is a fact because Tunga Vidya is a Saki and they are not limited to one thing. And then we, when we read Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, it is Gurudev's beloved book. You can see Baba is clearly saying, he is there as a kinkari. So now, again, this is again another point for the mystery of Mahaprabhu. We are so fortunate that Baba is saying and explaining to us these things in a very easy, understandable way. This is what makes this so valuable. You know, that we can understand due to the mercy of Mahaprabhu. Yeah, everything is actually possible. And this is actually for us. This is the greatest hope. Yes. Yes, thank you. Dainidi, Baba, did you have a second question or was that, uh, was that it? Everything is included. <laughs> Everything's included. One stop, one stop uh, shop. Uh, for you, for those of you interested in this um, dialogue with Ramananda Roy and um, Mahaprabhu, it's, we're, we're studying it with uh, Garavani on Mondays, on the Monday session. In Chaitanya Charitamrita. Is, is Gurudev listening? Uh, right now he's no longer listening, but he was for okay. a while. Okay, nice. At the beginning. Uh, I suggest we continue a little bit before we run out of time. Yeah. And we're back to Radhika's waist. You'll be happy to know. Of course... Shrimati Radhika's waist will not break soon. But out of great unadulterated love, pure love for her Swamini Tulasi, is afraid that it will. Sí. What does love seek? Only the happiness of its object. Only the lovers can make the beloved happy. The lovers think, may you be happy. In uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, we read, the love of the devotees of Raj is as pure as molten gold. And there's not a whiff of personal happiness there in the hearts of these devotees. In Sri Radha's mood, Sri Man Mahaprabhu sings, Krishna is my life. Krishna is the treasure of my life. And Krishna is the life of my life. I keep him on my heart and I make him happy with my service. I always meditate on this. My happiness lies in service, and his happiness lies in intercourse, in relation. 
so I give my body to him. Krishna makes me his consort and tells me, you are the queen of my heart. But I just consider myself to be his maidservant. This is an older version of Vila Pakusamanjali, right? Yes. 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 How so is it because we, I, I, I had the instruction from Gurudev and I just want to mention this, uh, that we, we completely edited the Vilapa Kusamanjali because of this word in the course. We, 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 no. uh, uh, we replaced it with loving union or with loving pastimes. So that is, I just wanted to mention, you know, because it takes away a little bit uh, uh, the dirasa when we say in the course. In the course is not what, of course it is what, but with loving union and loving pastime. I just want to mention it's the new edition. The new edition has this. Sorry. Yes, it's a, it's a bit medical. I, I agree. So, and I'm, I'm asking, is it a kind of sampoga? Yes. You know, Advaita, Advaita Ji, when he first translated it, there were many, many times there was like sexual intercourse or sexual affairs yeah. and so and this and that. Of course, they have all these activities, but it's called samboga. But Samboga, not everyone understands. Sometimes we left it with Samboga, and sometimes I made in parentheses Samboga, parentheses, loving union, loving pastimes, parentheses closed, so that the people know what is Samboga. So I made a search with the word. I typed in intercourse, and I wiped out all these five, six, seven times where intercourse was mentioned. And the new editions don't have this anymore. So it's, it's a nicer flow. Mm. Yeah, we have uh, we have only the new edition in the uh, bookshop. You'll be happy to know. It's just that I can't afford it, so I I stay with my old one. So Udawaji, I would like to say then, uh, something. Please, yes. Yeah, because you read one very two very nice sentences actually uh, from the beginning of the paragraph when you were reading. What does love seek? And the Baba is giving the answer, only the happiness of its object. Jaya. When we are talking about love, we are talking about pure love, not love which are coming out of senses, but material body. Only this pure love, spiritual love, in spiritual relationship, has ability to seek happiness for beloved. And I remember, I forgot, maybe Tarunji can help me. I remember that there was three bases, three grounds on which prema exists. First ground is the most important, and it's Farup Lakshana, it calls. So, happiness the essence of priti, essence of prema, is the happiness of beloved or Krishna or Ishtadev. This is the main cause of everything. This is the essence of prema, because the constitutional position of prema is to make Ishtadev happy. This is constitutional position. Prema cannot escape from this constitutional prema. This is the essence, the soul of prema, the soul of priti, is to make Ishtadev, Radhika, happy. Then Baba explained two other points, which are important, but they are tatastalakshani. This, we can say, secondary qualities. Secondary. Secondary qualities, yeah. All desires which are then coming in the heart of devotee, all desires, he didn't say devotee doesn't have desires. All desires which are coming in the heart of devotee are mentioned to satisfy, to give the pleasure with his seva to Ishtadev. And then the third ground, base of the prema is when my beloved Ishtadev is happy, then I am happy. 
So this is the nature, constitutional position of prema. These three grounds, I, I learned it. <laughs> you know, I don't know from where, it's from Vilapa somewhere, but I learned it and I, tr I try hard to remember it because it's so crucial, so important. I remember, I, re no, I, yes, yes. I remember a wonderful lecture Gurudev was giving in America in the, in the house of a priest. And you said now, uh, Udava, what does love seek? And then Baba is explaining the nature of selfless love. And Gurudev, he is so, so expert. He was speaking mm -hmm. to a, 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 a church, you can say, and there were ministers sitting there and the, the priest was sitting there. And Gurudev, this, this, what does love seek, reminds me very much of that verse in the Bible. Uh, it's the, the, high, the, high, the high song of love. The, the, in the Bible, there is one very, very, very beautiful, holy der Liebe. There's a wonderful definition of love, and it's going like love doesn't love doesn't take this, love doesn't take this, love okay, doesn't. Yeah. It's a wonderful, wonderful verse, and Gurudev was giving a class on that verse, and actually, Baba, this is the same, the same essence. You can say, you can say, this is the yeah. same essence here that love is not asking for anything. Loving means giving, and Gurudev expertly gave this class. And everyone was mm. so happy. And I, I was just reminded of this, what does love seek? It only seeks the happiness of the beloved. Yeah, Brief on the Corinda, very nice. So Devi knows. Thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful. Beautiful. So this is a bhakti. And from that crucial points, all prayers are coming, all natural humility is coming, without forcing Ishtadev, you have to give me. From this basic understanding and also feeling and also living in that mood and always correcting wrong consciousness in myself. No, no. Because these three points are giving wonderful direction. Am I going in proper direction or I'm just trying to deviate to, to make my own? Mm. So this, it's like a golden formula. <laughs> I will try to find where is it, and maybe I can post it mm. to rather than see. Please, yeah, please, yeah. Um, no, no, this the whole the whole objective is this kind of exchange. It's really very beautiful. Thank you. Um, then I'll continue if there are no other comments or questions. The maidservants just meditate on the pleasure of the Yugala Kishor. Shri Radhika and Shri Krishna have given themselves to each other and left all responsibilities for the arrangements of their loving affairs to the Sakis and the Manjaris. The playful Yugala has taken shelter of them. Un Madanirai maddened Radha. That's the sentence alone, I don't quit. One day, Shri Radhika is going out alone to meet Krishna with merely Anurag, deep passionate attachment to Krishna as her duty, her messenger. That's her only accompaniment. But when she comes to the gate of the Kunja, where Krishna is waiting for her, she suddenly feigns shyness. She pretends to be shy and unwillingness and asks her dutika, why have you brought me here? Even then, she tries to satisfy Shyama by making him relish the Vamya Rasa, the flavor of opposition. It's just like this line we had in the Radha Rasa Sutaniti this morning, actually, that I commented. That she's pretending to keep him away as part of the way of bringing him in, so to speak. Heightening the ecstasy. 
Yes, yes. Udavaji? Yes, please. Udavaji, this is the reason why just this short census, Unmadi Nirai, is said before explaining this mood of Unmadi Nirai. Baba, just shortly say Unmadi Nirai. So you have to think, what does it mean, Unmadini? In which kind of consciousness is Radhika? In which kind of feeling is Unmadini? Because she is starting to speak with herself. Completely mad. So he's thinking, so Bob is saying, this is an yes. example of Unmadini. Okay. Yes. And now he is explaining directly through the Lila what Unmadini Rai is doing how she mm. feels and she doesn't have anyone else behind her only one her duty her own passionate love anurag and because mm. of that she is talking to herself why have you brought me here because that's, 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 that's it's magnificent Yes. So she's walking through the forest. She's walking through the forest, accompanied yes. by her own passion. Yes. And turns to her passion and says, "Why did you bring me here anyway?" Yes. yes. This is the sign of unmada, completely craziness, you know, out of love, no. pure love. <laughs> Radhe. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> but also, what is very interesting here is now here now nobody is now accompanying her. This is okay, but actually. All the manjaris. Now we have no person. We have now no personification of this craziness because it's inside her head. But actually, all the manjaris which are helping her are actually expression of her feelings. Ma Radhi manjari is expression of her beloved attraction. Rupa manjari is the expression of her form, etc., etc. So all these things are really. It's really. It must be really a fantastic world up there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for a visit, shall we? Yeah. yeah. Shyama and the Sakis are very eager for her to give up this opposition, this false opposition, right? But nothing helps. The ocean of Krishna's eagerness increases, and everyone feels great heartache. Then Vrindavana thinks, Vrindavan thinks, let me once see what I can do. It is the Varsaharshavana, the blissful rainy season, or Vrindavan suddenly creates a moon forest with its lila sukti, and clouds are calling in the sky with deep rumbling voices making Swamini fearfully and tightly embrace the Lord of her life. So there's somebody else on the scene. It's Vrindavan itself, which is yeah. going to stir up a rainstorm to make th things even more exciting. Everything is personal. Everything. Hmm. Everything is Chinmayaras. Everything hmm. is personal. Everything is personification of yeah. Prem. Yeah. Hmm. The Sakis say, blessed are you, friend the cloud. Today, you were even more clever than all the Sakis together. In this way, even the clouds of Brindavan are blessed with the devotional service of the Shri Yugola. This is the first meeting described by the great poet Kavi Karnapura after he sucked the nectar out of Shriman Mahaprabhu's toe. Again, sometimes Shyama is helpless and finds no other means to meet Radhika, but to take shelter of the Manjaris. The Kinkaris know the grace and the beauty of the Yugala Prema. I continue? Sure. Tulasi is in the kingdom of devotional service and decorates her Swamini, telling her, your waist is so thin. On top of that, 
you have a heavy burden, your bosom. And under it, you have a heavy basis, your broad hips. What if it will break while you dance? That's why I'm always afraid. By calling her Krishodari, slender girl, Tulasi reminds Swamini of her previous pastimes with Krishna. Blessed is the maidservant. One day, Radha and Krishna have their amorous pastimes in the kunja. Swamini is now the active lover, and Shyama is passive. The roles of the lovers are reversed. How wonderfully Krishadari moves her slender waist then. The transcendental, youthful Cupid is beside himself of ecstasy. Although he himself is full of transcendental bliss, his mind becomes overwhelmed when he carries the burden of Mahabhav. The Nagara is overwhelmed by Shriyadika's undulating sweetness. And the Radharani, when she gets Krishna like that, she is attacked by two enemies, Ananda, uh, ecstasy, and Madana. Udava, can you can Udava, sorry, can you read again the sentence with the burden? That's what I wanted to ask you to comment, so I'd be glad to, yes. Just <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe two sentences before. Krishna. Yes. The transcendental youthful Cupid is beside himself of ecstasy, although he himself is full of transcendental bliss, his mind becomes overwhelmed when he carries the burden of Mahabhav. So, this is very deep. This is very, yeah, this is so, so many things. Uh, Baba is saying just this sentence, but by the grace of the great Mahajans, Gurudev and Baba himself, we know now what this means, um, that Krishna is overwhelmed by the burden. So, you said before that their roles, the roles are now changed, right? So Radhika yes. is now the aggressor and Krishna is the one who gets attacked, let's say like that. So that mm -hmm. Baba is saying through the flowers, not everyone can understand this and the book is definitely anyway, not for anyone. So here we can see without going too deep that actually Krishna is not overwhelmed by any burden in the mantle thing, but he is overwhelmed. What is the burden? The burden are Radhika's hips and Radhika's breasts. So here Krishna is overwhelmed by this burden. He is overwhelmed and out of, out of himself of ecstasy because this burden weighs on him and he carries this burden. You can see what he is carrying, you know. So these are the loving pastimes Baba is trying to share with us without revealing too much, you know. But as Rasikas taught us or teach, teach us, we can immediately understand what is going on there. And only now this only the manjaris can understand and, and witness this thing. Mm. And all these things can be revealed through Kama Gayatri, because they are Kama Gayatri. Was this your question, Udova? No, it was an explanation of the Mahabhav in ex exactly what you gave. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so then we go into the closing sequence with the, the poem by Chandra Dasa. That time or dream in which I saw Krishna holding the flute to his mouth, two enemies came. Again, ecstasy, Ananda, and Madana, Cupid. They stole my mind so that I could not fully see him anymore. If I could see Krishna again for just one moment, then I would decorate these seconds, minutes and hours with flower garlands, sandalwood pulp, and jewels. There again, we see the strange vision. He's decorating time itself, the minutes that he's together in the kunj. Mm -hmm. 
That is the expression of lopa. That is the expression of transcendental greed. Huh? Eagerness. He is so eager that his poetic his poetic license overflows. Hmm. Although the desire awakens now with this Ananda Das Babaji commenting again, although the desire awakens in her to praise even one moment that she can see Krishna, Sri Radhika cannot even serve him when she gets him on her lap. Mm -hmm. Thus she feels endless heartache. Sri Radhika's activities increase Shyama's ecstatic ab absorption. Mm -hmm. Then Tulasi leans against the gate of the Kunj and sings a love song. When our hero, who is in a swoon, hears it, he comes back to life again. He had lost his body or bodily consciousness. This is the explanation of the word Ananga in the Kama Gayatri, as Garanga Sundar said, out of loving ecstasy. But now he has his body back through Tulasi's doing. Cupid regains his body as soon as the amorous pastimes resume. Tulasi thus awakens the memory of all these pastimes within Swamini's heart. As soon as Tulasi takes the new golden sash on each side, of which is made, of which is a beautiful tassel in her hands to tie around Swamini's slender waist, the vision disappears. And Sri Raghunatha Dasa prays for more Shiringara Seva, decorating service. Harazika Chandra Dasa sings, Listen, O Devi, to my aspiration. Ye slender Radhe, O Queen of Vrindavana. Your waist is very slender, so I will bind it with a golden string with tassels at both ends, being very much afraid that it, your waist, will break. How astonishing is the beauty of your waist when it is thus decorated. And there concludes the commentary to verse 35. There is, there is one more wonderful example of the craziness. Like Baba is saying, Unmadi Radhika. So you read, just now you read, that Radhika is not even satisfied serving Krishna when, he, when she is on his lap. So there is this one pastime to, to show how the love is making Radhika crazy is that when she is sitting on Madhusudan's lap, she sees herself in, in the pearls and thinks, oh my God, Krishna is together with another woman. So this is another example of completely Madanakya Bhav madness. And this is actually astonishing for us human beings to, to behold and to read. So this is the Senit, the Senit of, of this highest love that she even... She is sitting right with him, but she thinks that some other girl is with him. This is this is really this is the Sanit, the highest point of modern Akya mm. Mahabharata. This is glorious that we can all relish together these wonderful pastimes.